What's going on guys? Love Smash, back with an all new video today, and today's topic is called 30 Days Away. And what I mean by that is, as of right now today, we are exactly 30 days, a month, whatever you want to say, away from the Japanese release date of the 3DS version of Smash Bros. But there still are a lot of unanswered questions regarding characters. Where are the remaining veterans? Will they all return? What about the newcomers? How many more will there be, and who will they be? So that's what we're going to try to answer today and break some stuff down and talk about. But before we get into everything, I just want to say like all my videos, this is only speculation and the sharing of ideas and opinions. Nothing is official in any way. So like I said, September 13th is the official Japanese release date of Smash Bros. in Japan. Unfortunately, we will not be getting it here in the States, and the rest of the world, in Europe and such, will not be getting it till October 3rd. Some places will get it October 2nd or 4th, if I'm not mistaken. But let's talk about Japan-wise. We are 30 days away now, so what's going to happen in these next 30 days? So, let's get into it. So now with Meta Knight making his big return on Wednesday, which was kind of a shocking thing to people, we'll get into that in a little bit in the video, but that brings us to a total of 37 characters. 39 if you count me, Brawler, Swordfighter, and Gunners as three separate characters, which in the Me Reveal trailer, Sakurai said they will be three separate characters. How they'll look on the character select screen, that failed to be seen. But now let's talk about the rest of the veterans before we get into the newcomer discussion. And there are a total of 13 new, um, excuse me, 13 veterans that have not been revealed yet. So. Sakurai has already stated that not all veterans will make the jump from Brawl into the new game. And same thing in Melee, we saw like in Brawl, we didn't get all the characters from Melee to Brawl, so I think we will get cuts in this game. Now it's just a question of who. So, here are the 13 characters we still have no um, word on if they're going to return or not. So, let's start from the characters first, that there was some in-game evidence pointing to their possible return. And this is either um, assist trophies, um... Uh, Smash Run stuff, anything else pointing to it. So let's start off with Ness and Lucas. Let's first start off and talk about Ness. Now Ness is a three-time vet and one of the original 12. Highly unlikely that he's being cut. He isn't going anywhere. Now Lucas, on the other hand, is a toss-up. A lot of people love Lucas and want to see him return, while a lot of other people argue saying he's just a clone, he shouldn't return, we don't need two carrots from Earthbound, whatever the argument may be. But we do definitely know that we're getting some kind of Earthbound representation, mother representation, whatever you want to call it. We have Mr. Saturn as a returning item along with the Franklin badge. So I pretty much think it's just the time when um, Ness is going to be revealed. I can't imagine him going anywhere. Lucas, on the other hand, I'm not sure if he would return or not. That's pretty much up for debate between people who are for Lucas against Lucas. That's up to you guys. So now let's move on to the Ice Climbers, and the Ice Climbers are two-time vets. They were included in Melee because they best represented the 8-bit era of Nintendo. They are a very unique character. Now, I know there were reports early on saying that Sakurai was having a hard time making the Ice Climbers work, how they would appear on the 3DS version and such, but it seems like he's corrected that problem with the addition of Rosalina and Luma, and he's figured out how to make that work. And also, we have the Polar Bears and an enemy in Smash Run, so it seems likely the Ice Climbers would return as well. Alright, so now let's move on and talk about Wario. Wario, another very popular character in Smash Bros. I can't even imagine why Wario would ever be cut. And um, we have in-game evidence to go by with Wario as well, with both Ashley and Waluigi as assist trophies in the upcoming game. Even Waluigi, for some reason, is sporting the Wario logo instead of the Mushroom logo for Mario. But it seems like Wario's return is just very likely as well, so there's another one. Moving on to Mr. Game & Watch. Now, Mr. Game & Watch has been up for debate. Now, Mr. Game & Watch, two-time vet, oldest character in Nintendo. I can't ever imagine why he would ever be cut. But I say that there has been some debate with... Mr. Game & Watch, and it's the fact that he was in Pac-Man's reveal trailer, but yet on the website, after Pac-Man was added to the website, we didn't see Mr. Game & Watch. Now when we had the uh, Robin and Lucina trailer, Captain Falcon appeared in there, and then Captain Falcon was put on the website as well. So this begs the question of why wasn't Mr. Game & Watch? And frankly, I have no idea why. If anyone has any input on this, please feel free to share it, but I have no idea why they'd show him and then cut him. That makes no sense in my opinion, so I think his return is very likely as well. Now let's move on to some characters where there is no in-game evidence, and we'll start off with Ganondorf. Ganondorf, being a two-time vet, the main Zelda villain, I don't, can't even imagine why he would ever be cut. I do think they have to um, update his moveset, though, give him, stop making him a Captain Falcon clone, give him some diverse... Uh, diversity in his moveset at least, do that at least, but Ganondorf very likely as a return as well. I'm actually very shocked that he wasn't revealed. I feel like a lot of people, including myself, really thought he was going to be the character revealed this week on Thursday, but he was not. We got Meta Knight instead. But now let's move on to Falco. Falco, two-time vet, very popular from the Star Fox franchise. Um, I can't imagine why he would be cut. I do think we need some, uh, he needs a moveset change as well. I don't know if they would do that though. I think he'll probably, if he when he does return, I think he will return, but I feel like they'll just end up keeping the same old moveset for him. 
And let's talk about Wolf now. Wolf is a character I feel like is kind of on the edge, along with Lucas, on his return or not. Now, I know a lot of people will say, we need more villains in Smash Bros. Why would you cut the main Star Fox villain and stuff? I don't know if he would be cut. It's kind of like, at, at one time I did, now I don't know. It's kind of like um, a toss-up, though, for me with Wolf, so I don't know. I know a lot of people are fans of him and want him to return, and a lot of people just see him as a heavier Star Fox clone, so I'm going to leave that up to you guys as well. Moving on to Rob now. Rob's another character I had on my cut list. I mean, I said in my video, I do love Rob. I just don't know if he worked well as a character in Smash Bros. But I do think Rob's very cool. I did say that. But I, as his return, I don't know. Seems like a little on the edge as well. I know a lot of people will say everything. They're pulling out all the old school stuff for this game. So why wouldn't Rob return? Uh, moving on to Jigglypuff now. Being one of the original 12, I can't imagine Jigglypuff ever being cut. Even though she was irrelevant in Brawl, she still made it in. She's relevant again now with Fairy Types. In Generation 6, of course, I feel like Jigglypuff is going to return as well. And now let's talk about Squirtle and Ivysaur. And these are two characters that I really do think are going to be cut. Don't get me wrong, I love the addition of the Pokemon Trainer in Brawl. Great addition, but now there are no transformations. The Pokemon Trainer is gone. We have Charizard. We have Pikachu. I think Jigglypuff is going to return, like I said. That would give us three Pokemon from Gen 1. Then we have Lucario, one Pokemon from Gen 4. And we have Greninja, one Pokemon from Gen 6. So I don't know if Squirtle and Ivysaur would fit in with that. We have Greninja as a water Pokemon. I don't think we would get Squirtle as well. Ivysaur I don't think is very likely as well. I feel like once the Pokemon trainer was cut, it kind of killed Ivysaur and Squirtle's chances. But of course anything can happen, but this is just my take. I feel like a lot of people do think they're going to be cut as well. And moving on to the last character. I know this is going to upset a lot of people, but I really don't see Snake as returning. We have three third-party characters with Sonic, Pac-Man, and Mega Man. Kojima has already said he's not working on the game with Sakurai. He put out a plea saying that he wanted Snake included, but it just comes down to if Sakurai did end up including him. I don't know if he would include him since we have three third-party characters already. I feel like that is a lot for the game. So I know a lot of people will be upset with me saying I don't think Snake is going to return. I know he's got a lot of diehard fans. I love the addition of Snake and Brawl, don't get me wrong, but I just don't see his return very likely. So I'm sorry if I offend a lot of you guys out there by saying that. But those are three characters I feel comfortable saying I don't think are going to return. So now let's talk about some newcomers, and uh, with newcomers, we are approaching 30 days now, so it just begs the question of how many more trailers are we going to get where they can show off newcomers? Is there going to be a direct sometime um, in the next few weeks in August? Is there going to be one in September at some point? Is that we're just going to get another one of those character reveal trailers on the website? We don't know. Only time is going to tell. But I do think we're going to definitely get two more of those trailers. So now it just begs the question of which newcomers are going to be in there? Are there going to be more than one? All that stuff. But as of right now, we have 11 newcomers, 13 by counting the Mi Brawler, Gunner, and Sword Fighter as three separate characters instead of just saying the Mi Fighters. That brings us to 11 to 13, whichever way you want to look at it. So it just begs the question of how many more are going to be in this game, and I want to talk about some stuff Sakurai has said. And the first thing is the whole thing regarding new character trailers, where Sakurai said, looks like we're nearing the bottom of the stash of new challenger videos that we've made. So, um, a lot of people are like guessing that there's going to be, they're going to show the new uh, trailers, and then when the game comes out, the game cartridge on the 3DS, there are going to be some secret characters that we didn't see or whatever. But I have said that in a previous video, I see this very unlikely, considering Sakurai's going through all the work to making these new character reveal trailers and revealing them worldwide at the same time. And um, a thing I want to bring up is the whole thing with the subspace emissary. Now, I'm not comparing Subspace Emissary and Newcomers, I just want to clear that up, but I want to point out something with that that pertains to the argument. He says, quote, Unfortunately, the movie scenes we worked hard to create were loaded onto the internet. You can only truly wow a player the first time he sees. So, comparing that to, like, character reveals, they've been doing all these character reveal trailers, putting a lot of work into them, releasing them during directs, or E3, or the character reveal trailers, worldwide at the same time, so everyone can see the characters for the first time together. That's why I don't see it likely as adding secret characters onto, like, the 3DS cartridge, and then only people in Japan get to see them first. It, it's that same situation all over again, just with character reveals this time. Like, so I know for a fact that someone in Japan is going to buy the game, beat the entire game in a day, post up the roster online. So I feel like when it comes to new characters, all these newcomers and such, we're going to get all the newcomer trailers before September 13th. I feel like we're going to get one this month at least, we're going to get one trailer, and then we're going to get one in September. Um, along the lines of how many newcomers, if it's going to be one newcomer in each video, more than one, that fails to be seen and we don't know. But I think we're definitely going to get two more, and probably, if anything, we'll get the, the last one, maybe on September 12th, the day before the game is released in Japan. That will be the last newcomer we get. 
and trailer and such. So that's my thoughts on the whole situation. I really don't see that happening, but like getting the game. People in Japan are gonna get all these surprise new characters that we don't know about, and that just makes no sense to me. So I feel like if we're gonna get all the newcomers, it'll be before September 13th. Along the lines of veterans though, I feel like veterans, it's like if, if we don't get all the veterans, like Sakurai will just update the Miiverse more and he'll share all the veterans when they come out. Because like seeing a veteran like come back is not a surprise for people at, compared to a newcomer reveal trailer where everyone in the world is seeing that character for the first time in the game. Like seeing a veteran again is just like, okay, cool, they came back, but it's not like a surprise where a newcomer trailer is. So if we do get veterans, if we don't get them all before September 13th, which seems unlikely we will, I feel like Sakurai will just update the Miiverse more with those returning vets and stuff, and then we'll see them and such. But along the lines of newcomers, I do think we're gonna get all the newcomers before September 13th. So that's my theory, the whole take on the situation. So now regarding the number of newcomers, I definitely think we're gonna get at least two more newcomers. Like I said with the trailers, we don't know if we're gonna get multiple newcomers in those trailers or how many trailers we're gonna get. But two was definitely um, a safe number, I say, regarding newcomers that would give us, with the 11 or 13 we have, would give us 13 to 15, like I said, depending on the way you look at it. Added to the total roster would give us 39 to 40, plus all the returning vets we have. Let's say those were indeed the cuts. That would give us anywhere between 50, 50 the low 50 on the end of characters. So that's pretty much a safe number, I would have to say. I know people want like five more newcomers and such. I really don't think we're getting five. I think that's really pushing it. But of course, anything is always possible, but I'm very comfortable at saying two more newcomers, throw in some more vets, and then all that other stuff would give us like a grand total of around 50. And the last discussion I want to bring up with you guys is the whole unlockable secret character thing, because they have always been a staple in Smash Bros. since the first game. For example, the first game, we had four unlockable secret characters. In Melee, we had 11, and then 14 in Brawl. So now, with everything we've been seeing in the line of all the website, while well, seeing characters like Luigi and Toon Link and Marth, characters who have always been secret, are shown off early, and then we've been getting all these newcomers, and we know about them, what does that mean for the game along the lines of secret characters? Well, like I said, with the whole thing, revealing the newcomers, that's probably why Sakurai is showing them all off now, so it won't be like one of those things when Japan sees them first, and spoils the surprise for everyone in the States. But now along the lines of all these characters, maybe when the games actually come out, for instance, when the 3DS version comes out, like characters like Greninja or Lucina or Rosalina will be secret characters on the game, but we'll know about them anyway. For example, like when Brawl came out, we knew about Sonic and Snake before the game, long before the game even came out, but they were still secret on the disc when we got the game, we had to unlock them. So that's what I feel like maybe the same approach is going there. For instance, we'll see the characters, we'll know who they are, but the time everything comes around, we'll have to unlock them, for instance, something like that. Because like I said, with the internet, there is no surprises anymore. Everything is gonna be revealed with this game as the second it's released in Japan. And maybe like a thing with like, if all the veterans, like I said, aren't shown off before September 13th, those veterans will be secret characters on the disc, and then Sakurai will sporadically release them on the Miiverse and such. Just another theory I had regarding things, I can't imagine there being no secret characters since they've been a staple in Smash Bros, and unlocking characters is one of the best things about the game. Even though we'll know about them beforehand, it's still fun unlocking them. Now I know people might say the characters that were in the demo are going to be playable from the start. We don't know that for sure. It, that could be the case, or it could just be that they wanted to show those specific characters off in the demo. But we don't know. Just wanted to get um, get your thoughts on all this stuff regarding newcomers. How many of you guys think they're going to be? Who do you think they're going to be? What about the veterans? Who's going to return? Who's not? Greatly appreciate if you guys would like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys when I see you with a brand new video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.